uh, how, how we define uh, how we define the DEL in the theoretical coordinate system. Or we can just remember what we how how we just found it above there that we normally introduce one of our law and then law. So we are first of all going to start with identifying Q Q Q law, which is simply this. And that is raw sine pi. And therefore, when you now say that it is going to be equal to one over raw, d d raw, raw times q raw, that means you're going to multiply, uh, you're going to, to have one over raw, um, d d raw of raw that we have introduced becomes squared, then sine sine phi. So if you are now to differentiate this with respect to rho, it simply becomes what? It simply becomes, uh, it simply becomes, uh, the result of this is, is two rho sine phi, and then one over rho, you end up with two sine phi. And this two sine phi is simply what we have right here. So I'm just showing you with the illustration how you can uh, you can get uh, the concepts that uh, might appear sometimes vague or unclear to you and therefore you can also do this other one uh, as, as such so without much ado i will uh, lab probably should not even lab let, let them remain there so there are some practical exercises that uh, you definitely need to work on and uh, you don't need to be reminded over and over again that the examples and the ex exercises are important. So you are highly advised that you work on examples as many as possible. And as I have been saying, I've been waiting for members to join the Google Classroom so that I can send the assignments uh, on there. And therefore, assignments for me are normally very uh, challenging. Therefore, you are advised to be sure to, uh, to be ready. Assignments, you can get help from your colleagues. Cuts, ideally, you should not. So uh, we will try to work that out. And now we jump to what we call curl of a vector. And these two come together, curl of a vector and Stokes theorem. The way we define divergence of a vector, after we define divergence, Divergence of a vector, we went to divergence theorem. Now we are saying that you're going to define curl of a vector, curl of A. And after we have done that, we are going to define a Stokes theorem. Stokes theorem. So that is where we are. And uh, we are going to start just by going briefly through our notes. Okay. I might, I might also make my screen slightly bigger for those who might have their phones as their viewing tool. So um, we have defined the saturation of a vector field A allowed a closed path as the closed line integral as this one. This is how we defined, this is how we defined the saturation of a vector field. We say that if you have a closed path and that closed path is being traversed by, or it is saturating around a vector A, then we, there's something we said about that if you go through this, then you're going to, to determine how much this vector A circulates or swirls around that cross through. This is my, my cross through. So, um we want now to to define curl of a vector i am not sure if we have not done that i think we had already defined the curl of a vector yeah we did 
but again, it doesn't harm if we just repeat it. That we said that uh, the curl of, of A is an axial or rotating vector whose magnitude is the maximum circulation of A per unit area as the area heads to zero and whose direction is the normal direction of the area when the area is oriented to make the saturation maximum. So here is the point we are saying. And I, as I mentioned, for those who have come late, there is a video that I have shared that demonstrates the concept that I'm talking about. And that video is, uh, yeah, there's a video here that does a demo of of uh, of car and divergence. I'm not sure if it can be played. Probably should. Uh, please confirm you can you can see Imagine that we have you can hear. Someone confirm on chat that they can hear what the video is saying. Each point in space. Good. There's something I want to show you about the. There's something I want to show you about uh, this video, where we're talking about car. I have actually mentioned. I don't want us to go through this entire video. I just want to show you the concept that uh, is important about car, because you will. Uh, You'll be able to watch it on your own. So let's I had reviewed it and yeah, I think at this point. Just watch very briefly about two minutes, then we see what you're talking about. When we answered the previous question about particles being absorbed or generated, we had a three-dimensional volume that could be any shape or size, and we cared only about the arrows on the surface surrounding the volume. And we cared only about the portion of each arrow that was perpendicular to the surface of the volume. When answering questions about the particles swirling, instead of using a volume, we now use a two-dimensional surface that can be any shape or size. The surface is surrounded by a loop. We care only about the arrows that are on the loop. And we only care about the portion of each arrow that is. So, uh, that was not supposed to be done like for the whole lecture. That video just illustrates the concept of swirling. Probably the word is here. Swirl. Swirl is means to circulate. And therefore, when we talk about a vector, uh, probably a vector that is uh, directed like that, and you're asking yourself, is it rotating itself? Or rather, is that this vector that you are describing here as A, is it rotating around a cross through? Then, if it doesn't, then we normally say that the car of that A is equal to zero. But if the vector itself is rotating, like we have seen, and I should just do a very simple ex expression, 
uh, and say that that this vector probably should give it color. This vector has components that are rotating along the crossed loop. Then this uh, that saturation allowed that cross loop is the one that is defined as the curl of A. It is not equal to zero. So um, in few words, you will have enough time to watch those videos on your own. But uh, the most important thing to notice is that curl of a vector is defined as that amount of saturation. But you don't say that uh, a, a surface that is bigger than this, but the same rate of, of row of A has a higher has higher rotation. The idea is you normally have to divide, like divide up that saturation with the service. So, so that if this service is a unit area, like one meter squared, and another bigger service, another bigger service is uh, say 10 meter squared, and there's also a vector that is going around it, then the idea is you always uh, weight down this weight or this area or this saturation with respect to area. Therefore, you say the per, per, per meter squared. So you would say divide by 10 squared divided by 1. And therefore, if the saturation that is defined in this service, uh, when you divide by 10 becomes that service, that saturation becomes the same. And therefore, the curl is always a factor of a unit area. That is the concept I wanted to make sure that uh, that, that you get that uh, the curl is always a, a vector whose magnitude is the maximum saturation of A. So you're asking yourself, how much is this A going? Okay, I think I have just drawn a different direction, but how much is my vector rotating? So the, the magnitude of that is the one that we say will be pointing when we now say, okay, let, let, let me try to be very clear here, that the direction of a vector A So the idea is uh, the vector is the one that is rotating, but the curl of that vector is going to be pointing no more to the surface. So that is my saturation. And my vector A is defined as rotating around, around that uh, loop. But then that is, of course, the magnitude and the direction of A. When you do curl of A, the curl of A will be pay, pointing outward. Remember how we use those these two symbols? There is this symbol that is going into the book, and these are the symbol that points outward. So the the car or the, the the direction of the car of A will be pay, pointing outward from the service on which the A is rotating. So that is generally the idea. And that AN is the direction that you are dividing towards the AN. So, uh, well, that was supposed to be more of an introduction than uh, to, to stay the whole day there. So that you think that the, the direction is normal to the area and is oriented to make the maximum saturation. And therefore, uh, we can we, we have said that we are dividing the saturation by area. That's why we have this one. And when you normally limit the, the incremental service area to zero, that means we are doing the, uh, derivative. Derivative is the one that you normally introduce the concept of limit as the element approaches zero. So we are saying that the Area DS is bounded by the curve L, and AN is the unit normal vector to the service. Uh, 
data service and is determined by the right hard rule. So we are going to see, of course, in the videos that I have shared also, that we define them by the right by the right hard rule. The right hard rule says that uh, um, the lab is facing that direction, and the other figures are are pointing towards the the this is the rotation. The figures are showing the rotation or the car, and this is the direction of the of the car that it will. Well, this is the, the, the field A, the, the field B that is rotating, but then when it rotates, the, the, the output or the direction of the car of B will be pointing upwards, uh, the, the direction of the thumb. So having said that, um, we can now do some derivations here, which I, uh, for the sake of time and interest, I avoid doing, but I want now to jump to, the only thing you need to remember is that this is how we define, uh, this is how we, we, we denote the car. And at the elemental level of derivation, you definitely start at this point, but the actual definition of car of A is the one that we did some time back and it was defined by this equation three, five, three. That is something we said. We normally we, we normally have to put the unit vectors ax, ay, and az, and then partial derivatives along the Cartesian coordinate system, and then the 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 elements along each direction ax, ay, and az. That is how you define the car, and this some something we have already met in our past class. So having said that, um, of course, simplification of this one in uh, Cartesian simply becomes that and, that, and that is something that we have already done. You don't have to be reminded how to do that. I, I someone confirmed that in, the, in the last class that you already didn't know how to get, uh, if you have this, um, magnitude of a vector you just have to, to pick uh, the first and then we normally close this and this and then you do uh, this arrow then minus that arrow which is d d y is z minus partial derivative with respect to z a y and then you, you can say minus depending on how you remember and do the same thing uh, for the other bit. So when you do that, you actually get, get, get that. The one we have we have done is this one. So generally, that is something that we have done in the past. And for those who are having trouble, you can always refer to your uh, vector magnitude. And I think matri matrices. You must have done that in geometry. Someone mentioned that. So. We having said that, I think we now jump to how we find car. That car we have out there is in Cartesian coordinate system. So you can, uh, we want now to jump to the one that is done in uh, cylindrical coordinate system. And as, as we have been saying that we are not going to bother ourselves with driving, <coughs> how, how each of those comes about. All we need to know is that uh, from the one we have done of Cartesian, introduce one of our row there, and then introduce this row there, and there. So we are introducing row at three points. Everything else remains as they, they would be normal. So we are saying that uh, A, instead of AX, we have A row. Instead of ax, we have a row. Then instead of a phi, or rather, instead of ay, we have row a phi. And instead of, instead of, uh, of course, az remains the same. So there is no instead there. The other thing that that we are saying that we are breaking our a 
in uh, in Cedrico to have a row plus a phi plus a az. The only thing we are saying when you want to do the curve of that is that we are introducing rho at that point. Rho becomes a coefficient of a phi. So well, this is more of remembering. And I say that ideally this formula is provided for. The most important thing is to, to know that it exists and it is not the same uh, for the Cartesian or for the spherical. So I'm reminding those who are watching us on uh, on YouTube, be sure to uh, to log in, uh, to indicate your registration number. I can see that not all the registration numbers have been added. So if you are following us on YouTube, be sure to add the registration number and the names on the chat. Okay. So that is it for for the cylindrical coordinate system. And for the spherical, uh, again, we are moving in with patterns. Sometimes we don't need to bother ourselves with uh, much derivation. Remember what we have introduced in, uh, uh, in the cylindrical, which is introduce one over all. So you're saying that in the spherical, we are introducing one of us R squared time beta. And now we are introducing similarly this one, just the way we, in, we did that, but then we are introducing something else there and there, which is R sine theta. Again, this is uh, uh, mathematics, so to derive this one would be, is definitely some, some work, so we, won't, we don't have time for that. The idea is to see as how much we can remember or how much as much as possible we, but that we can remember okay so this covers of course this translates to this and uh, we don't have really much trouble with that so again some important properties of car and uh, is that uh, if you have a plus b two vectors you're adding you want to look out of them you can do them individually and you're going to get the same result and then if you are carrying a product across product of two vectors that means something else will come and this is not straightforward this is not straightforward because what you are going to end up with is a series of uh, 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 divergence and and gradient because of course not gradient rather but uh, scalar multiplication of, of, of vectors so because every time you have a divergence this becomes a scalar every time you have a divergence it becomes a scalar huh? so this, this is scalar k2 k2 k1 k0 and k I don't know what k3 so these are becomes vectors so we should develop a way of remembering this i don't know if i, would, I have uh, developed i'm not very sure let me see where we are a divergence of b no i have not done this one i have not remember i have come up with a way of remembering that one so for now i think we can just move on it becomes our work our to do our to do task so <clears throat> that is one of the property of a car <coughs> and therefore this is just a car of a car of a scalar product of a and this is yet the one we did with dot product and uh, it follows something similar to uh, the product rule so well we should also try to find a way we can remember this one the, the last two important points that we should get is that divergence of the curl of a vector vanishes so here is the point and this is a general truth that divergence of curl of a vector always goes to zero because we are asking ourselves this guy is rotating giving us uh, the magnitude of a rotating vector normal to the direction and then we are asking ourselves is that vector diverging and clearly what we found out is that 
diverging vector is normally outward, coming out. But, but, the, but the, the curve of E is always pointed in one that direction. So this will always be a zero. So find a way of remembering that, that divergence of curve of E will always be zero. And another one that is always goes to zero is that uh, car of gradient of a scalar also goes to zero. Car of gradient of a scalar always goes to zero. So what this means is that we are asking ourselves if this one is uh, this one, remember that, that V was initially a, a scalar. So when we introduced the gradient, we are asking ourselves, if we get up, we end up with a vector that is pointed towards direction. And therefore, this becomes our vector. So if this vector, you find a curve of it, we can definitely see that this uh, vector is not rotating at all because it is just pointed towards one direction. Therefore, it can always be zero. So th these are two ways we can uh, remember these two rules that car of gradient of a scalar is zero and divergence of car of a, of a vector always goes to zero. So the physical significance of car of a vector field is evident. The car of the car provides the maximum value of circulation of the field per unit area and indicates the direction along which this maximum value occurs. The, the curve of vector A at point P may be regarded as the measure of the circulation or how much the field curves allowed point P. So again, I think from what we have said already, we have already shown that uh, uh, a vector that, that is rotating always kind of uh, gives us a curve that is pointed towards normal surface to the surface of rotation. And uh, it just describes the magnitude, how much this rotation is happening here. And I, I, I trust that the video that I have last alluded to in our, in our Go classroom should be able to assist you uh, see those points. That figure 320 uh, shows that the curve of a vector field around P is directed to out of the figure. That is figure, figure 320A. Figure 320A should be here. So as we have been saying, at, point, at this point P, we have a vector uh, going around it, uh, following that direction. Then we are saying that curve of that vector we call this one vector A that was rotating. If we call that the curve of that vector A is going to be pointing outward of the of the service described uh, this service. It's going to be pointing outward. So it is going to be coming out of the book or out of the screen. That is what that uh, uh, point illustrates. It shows that the curve of a vector field around point P is directed out of the page. And there, figure 320 shows a vector field with zero curve. Again, you can simply say that uh, if you find curve of this vector, you find the curve of this vector, you can simply see that this vector is not rotating. So even if you try to go around it, you can see that there is no, there is no element of the vector that is, if you call this one B, if you if you go around it, there is no component of B that is going around uh, that vector, and therefore, or allowed point P. And therefore, the vector or the curve of this vector is definitely definitely uh, zero. Curve of car at point P is zero. So I think, uh, let's see, what does figure, figure 21 say? We are going to refer to figure 21 later. From the definition, we now come to what is called the Stokes theorem. And the Stokes theorem is defined by this equation. 
the derivation of the Stokes theorems comes down here, which we don't uh, actually want to uh, delve over much. So the idea we want to remember is this, that if we have a, if we, if we have a vector, If we have a vector A that has that if you plot if you took it around uh, this closed loop, there would be some uh, non-zero value. That value that that means that A was rotating around this loop. If you find the divergence or rather the dot product of A with uh, with the elemental length, if you find that this is not equal to zero, that means there is an uh, there is an element of A that is going parallel to the path uh, DL, and therefore once uh, what that gives you is that it would it would say that the the curve of A would give you a vector that is pointing out of this service, uh, which which is described by DS. So what does that mean? Uh, anyway, probably in not using very many words, the concept that all of us must remember is this, that Stokes theorem states the following, that the circulation of a vector field A allowed across the path L is equal to the service integral of the curve of A over the open surface S bounded by L, provided 